Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Welcome to Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast. Uh, We have a local author here, although at the moment she is not physically local. Um, Please tell everybody who you are um, and where you are now and also where home is for you. Oh, I love that question. Where is home for you? So I'm Susan Lax and um, I'm speaking to you from Tel Aviv, Israel right now. And um, my home goes in between New York and Tel Aviv. So I go back and forth um, a lot. (laughs) And pre-COVID, it was every 10 weeks um, back and forth. But uh, now it's a little bit less. And I'm hoping now that I'm recovering from COVID, (laughs) um, this will um, go back to every 10 weeks. Um, And my home is really where my heart is. I was hoping you were going to say something like that because, uh, you know, and even like reading, reading the book and reading the introduction to it, um, they're really, you know, you can feel like you're displaced in your own home, depending on where your mentality is. Um, And, you know, there's a lot of people who I suppose over the last two years have probably felt that way. Uh, You know, it's been, a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty, and, um, you know, reading your book, A Heart's Landscape, is really just a nice meditation on moments and life and what makes your heart your home. Um, So I have read it, and I know the introduction and uh, how this book came to be. But for those who might be interested, uh, could you please give us a little snippet as to where this book came from? So I am a spiritual counselor and um, I have been writing something called Morning Inspiration for the last, at this point now, 13 years. And Morning Inspiration are just Uh, me sharing in different ways moments that can make a difference in one's day. And they're my moments. And they stem from awareness, which is a practice that just makes for a better day, a better everything. Um, And this began because I had a girlfriend, a very good, good, good dear friend. I still have her. Not I had, I still have her. And um, She was ill, she was touched by cancer. And when I had asked her, um, what can I do? She was, I don't wanna have anything uh, to talk, to share with everyone, this is mine. And out of total, out of respect and honor for her, I did that, but I missed her. And I wanted to reach out to her in some form. And so I had this idea, what if I write her an email? And I said to her in the email, you don't have to answer it. And if you want me to stop, just tell me. And I started writing her emails about moments, never mentioning cancer or illness, because it was my hope that she would never forget who she was. She was not cancer. Um, And that's a very big part of the work that I do when I work with people that are ill or ending life in this world is that's not, they are still the same person. They're still the same soul, things, the story keeps changing, but the same person continues. And then one day I started, I wrote her every day. I would get up at six because I knew she was going for treatment early. And then one day I was sick with the flu. And at 7.30, I got a phone call. Susan, where is my morning blessing? And that's when I realized the power of stopping for a moment and just reading something that allows you to go like this. <sighs> and it's, it's, I went, wow, 
And I shared this with a group of women that I was uh, working with at the time that were uh, post and pre uh, mastectomies. And they said, wait a second, I, why is she getting this? Why are we not getting this? And that's how Morning Inspiration was born. And for the years, the Morning Inspiration grew and I didn't know many of the people, but people would write to me, why don't you put this in a book? Why don't you put this in a book? And then COVID hit. And I said, Susan, why don't you put this in a book? <laughs> and, um, and so it's a, uh, in here is a collection of my morning inspirations, some of them. Um, I went through 3,684 of them and condensed them down to a hundred and something and uh, share my photos that are inspiration to me in the book as well. I think a lot of what you said is so beautiful and for a lot of people, COVID was a forced slowdown and almost like a forced speed up at the same time. It's like, it was a very weird time period where in a way every day felt like a month, but that time flow kind of fluctuated. And I know, you know, a lot of us who were running, running, running and kind of missing things got to stay home with our kids, but then a lot of us lost people too. It was just such, an, it, it, such that, and I'm talking about, and not, it's, you know, at, as we speak, clearly it's not over people right. still getting it. Um, however, I'm hopeful that we have a better handle on it now with, um, with vaccines and um, boosters and upcoming antivirals. But, you know, those first, that first year even um, where we didn't know whether we should be wiping down our groceries um, or, you know, how, if you get it, if you were gonna make it, uh, it was just such a weird flux. And I think um, taking the time to have these morning blessings and see a moment for what it is and sort of know when to freeze and take something in became important to so many people. Correct. So in my work, you know, um, to rephrase something that you said, if that's okay, use the word freeze. And when we think of something freezing, that's cold. And so if anything, I want my morning inspirations to warm the heart, not freeze a moment, but warm the heart and warm, embrace us where we are. So I think that's really important. And, and COVID, you know, like anything else, gave us something and we were lost. We didn't have the map. You know, we, we didn't have that compass and we didn't know left, right, west, east. What are we doing? Here are we going? And I actually, I think in my book, I have something about that. I wrote about that because it was a feeling of, I don't know. And what do you do with that feeling if I don't know? Well, what does one do with that? And so in my work, there's a lot of, I don't know. I don't know what it'll be like. I don't want to know what it'll be like to be left without that person. I don't know what it'll be like to, to go through treatment. You know, there's so many I don't knows. And I really hope that morning inspiration offers a moment to say, so what if you don't know? So what? It's not about what will be. And it's not about what was because we have absolutely no control. Obviously COVID taught us that, but what was, we, it happened. But what our moment is right now, that's really the only thing we can say is ours right then and there. Because even the moment after, we're not quite sure. And so that's why I really believe when I, lecture and when I talk and when I write is we always must leave room for joy. Just leave room for joy. Because if we take one moment a day and we just, whatever it is that brings us 
to a place that we can tap into our emotion of joy, you know what? The next moment may be better. And the moment after that might even be better. And then when we meet someone, it's contagious. We could possibly contribute to their moment being better. And so on and so on. And really, if that was the way our world might be better than it is right now. And that's my intent with a heart's landscape, as well as with morning inspiration, that wherever it lands, in whatever home, on whatever screen, that a moment for that person is a breath of warmth, of an attentive heart, of something that can be filled with something that makes our heart smile. So the photography in the book, you did all of the photography? Yes, yes. Was it planned or were you just kind of at places and you saw a moment that you needed to embrace um, and that's when you snapped the picture? Or did you, like, did you say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna go to this place and I'm going to look for pictures to take? So I only started taking photos probably about five or six years ago. And actually I write about that in my book as well, that my father, um, may he rest in peace, he, was, he loved taking pictures. And I remember getting so upset. Why are you taking pictures, you know, when, right? And it's really a moment, it captures our moments. And I looked for things that were inspirational because when you live and practice awareness and an attentive heart, you notice things that perhaps you wouldn't notice if you're on automatic pilot. And when I noticed them, I started taking a picture of them. And sometimes that picture is the inspiration to my morning inspiration. And sometimes my morning inspiration is the inspiration for the photo. So one of my favorite things that you talk about in the book, and I, I want people to, you know, uh, go uh, look through it themselves. So I'm not going to mention everything because again, it's like a thing to be experienced. Uh, but for me, you talked about the book Ferdinand's The Ball, which was my favorite as a kid. And I made my mother read that book over and over again to me. And when I noticed that you pretty much said the same thing about your daughter and how, you know, that was almost um, like a formative moment for the two of you at a certain point, I was just so excited as a librarian and as a Ferdinand <laughs> fan and as a fan of my mother. Um, <laughs> do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. So I grew up on a kibbutz in Israel, which is, a, for those that don't know that are listening, is a communal farm. And my oldest daughter, Ayelet, was born on the kibbutz as well. And um, every night, I mean, there was a schedule on kibbutz. It was, we were very scheduled. And so at eight o'clock was bedtime and I would read to her. Um, and I wanted her to know English because um, my partner in love and life is American. And I thought it was important for her to be able to, so we would read to her in English um, sometimes. And this was her favorite story. And this was so much about there. And maybe you could share what was favorite about it for you in it. But no matter how many times I read it to her, there was something like this, wow. It was just something about that bull that touched her heart. And then one day she read it to me. And I knew that that was, I had to let go of something. But that was, it's a good thing. But as a parent, it was another first of letting go. And letting go in our lives continues to follow us on so many levels. And I think when we embrace a letting go as opposed to fighting it, 
um, again, we can experience life in a more fuller way. And I remember the feeling when she read it to me and it never left me because it was the first time she had read to me. And that's where that, that inspiration comes from. I am trying to remember if there was one thing that really struck me about uh, Ferdinand, but I think just overall, it was unlike any story I had ever heard at that point. You know, you have this story about a ball and he just wants to do what's not expected of him, um, but it's not in the rebellious way that rebellion normally happens like you think about rebellion and it's usually portrayed as something very loud and in your face and for Ferdinand it wasn't it was sitting and smelling those flowers and not fighting the ball fighter which was expected of him um and at that time I had no idea what actually happens during ball fighting. You know, you see cartoons, right. you figure the ball fighter wears the hat and has a red sheet or, you know, um, blanket right. and waves it and the ball goes through it. And, you know, I knew nothing of what actually happens during a ball fight, but I liked the idea that Ferdinand just wanted to sit and smell the flowers. Uh, and that was somehow very important to me as a child. Yeah, so my oldest daughter um, loved flowers and having lived on kibbutz, they were taught every flower because it's a big farm and she knew everything about flowers and she would stop and say, let's smell this. And that's really where that book came in because she identified very much that. And my message to her as a parent was, it's okay to do what you think is right. And what you think will bring you a moment of happiness. And I think that book to me is really, that's exactly what the bull did. And so many of us are, like we talked about, an automatic pilot getting through life, getting through the day, getting through the month. And whoa, 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 whoa. Remember, and I, you and I will never have this conversation exactly alike again. This day will never come back. This moment will never come back. Why not spend the moments that we only get once to experience by smelling the flowers? That is a really good reading of Ferdinand uh you know clearly that book had a lot more subtext than I think a lot of uh, us kids realized when it first came it came to us um it's an old book with a really interesting history but I love the story and like as I'm looking through a heart's landscape when that came up I was like well now I have my my thing you know here's the um here's the juice of that I want to really like take in and drink when I talk about the book because um, not that there weren't many, many other things, but because of that personal connection as a librarian and as a Ferdinand lover as a child, um, you know, that was like a, a good connection. Uh, and I think that as people go through the book, they're gonna find a lot of really nice connections that will be exactly in different ways. Exactly what you're telling me. I love hearing this because people have called me, have emailed me, have in any way possible to communicate with me to tell me, wow, I, that really resonated with me. That one was exactly what hit my heart. And I keep going back to it. And I think my intent with this book was exactly that. It was exactly that that wait, this touches something within each person, something different. And this book has no beginning and no end. It's just there. And one can open it at any time. And, you know, I tell people, take your finger, open a book and just put it someplace. And that's what will speak to your heart that particular day. So are you still doing morning inspirations? 
I do. Morning inspiration has evolved as my writing has evolved. I have evolved. I'm now 63. When I started this, I was 50, a little over 50. And I continue to write. I don't write five days, seven days a week. And I don't write five days a week. I write three days a week. And people from all over the world connect, you know, and I don't know who they are. I wish sometimes that I knew who these people were, but I don't. And I can share a story with you uh, about, I was in a doctor's office on Long Island and um, I was there with my daughter and I was uh, sitting in an office and all of a sudden the doctor said, Susan Lax. And across from me, there was a woman who was clearly going through cancer treatment. And she jumped up from her seat, came running over to me. Remember, this is pre-COVID. We have to and put her arms around me and said, you're Susan Lax. I have been receiving your morning inspirations for 10 years. And they have made such a difference in my healing. And so how can I stop? How can I stop? Thank you so much. This was lovely. If people want to find out more about a hearth landscape or about you, where can they find you? At susanpilax.com. And I love hearing from people. And I hope to hear from your listeners and with any questions. And I hope that a hearth landscape finds a home with some of you. Thank you so much. Um, once again, this was Jessica with Turn the Page podcast. Our guest today was Susan Lax. And we are going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.